Muhammad was somebody in the Old Testament. Yeah. I wouldn't necessarily have a... There are, there are certain things in the Hadith I don't think are right, but that's just in general, okay? Okay, fair enough. There yeah. are prophets that have acted like that before, no problem. Yeah. However, the thing is that for Islam, Muhammad is the seal of the prophets. Sure. So basically, this is Allah now saying, right, this is the <laughs> ultimate prophet. Okay. Yeah. Whereas yeah. for Christians, that's Jesus Christ. He sure. is the... the yeah. I believe, Uswatun an nas so that's the yeah. thing, isn't it? Yeah. You know, the example of humanity. Yes. Yeah. That is Jesus Christ for Christians. Yeah. Whereas yeah. for Muslims, it's Muhammad. And I personally prefer Jesus Christ as my example. We, we, the our, our theology teaches us, first of all, not to have preferences for any, not to place them. In, but in, Muhammad leads Jesus in prayer, no? Um, no, when Jesus comes back, he is a lead, he leads the prayer. Do they not say in the in the in the in the hadith that Muhammad when he went on his on the night journey he led Jesus in prayer? Is that okay, not said? Okay, that's that's possibly true. But I'm saying that when Jesus comes back, which we both believe, he will be leading the prayer, which is more detriment to okay. us as Let's, believers than vice versa. Let me ask you a question then. Yeah. Okay. Would you say, as a believing, pious Muslim... Yeah, well, I try to be. Okay, exactly. Well, we yeah. all try to be, exactly. Yeah. That Jesus and Muhammad are of equal stature before God. Okay. Completely equal. Okay. No difference in the world. Muhammad yeah. is in no way superior to Jesus yeah. in any way. Yeah. Would you say that? We are not supposed to say that. The Quran gives us an injunction that tells us not to... Uh, uh, put so hierarchy. Equal. No, it's not for us to do that. Okay. It's not for us to do that. We're not. There's no injunction that gives us to do that. However, mm. Muhammad is close to us, and we love him in terms of proximity, mm. because he is the last messenger. We believe. Mm -hmm. So therefore, we have veneration for him. But that doesn't diminish the veneration that we should have from Isa Isa ibn Maryam. Yeah, sure. back, right? That he has stolen his place and his place order, and we venerate him. And you're sure, familiar with this, that whoever denigrates Jesus standing as a messenger, as a prophet, is, is, is leaving the fold of Islam. So it's very, very particular I mean, here. I respect that. I, I, I love that about your religion. I do. Yeah. Um, but yeah, in my personal, you know, in my reading of Islam, it's yeah. always seemed like, yeah. yes, that Jesus is second. Second prophet. That's how I've seen. That's yeah. how I've read. Yeah. Yeah. Perhaps that's mistaken. But, yeah. And uh, that Muhammad is, you know, just the best of all, basically. Yeah. Um, you could say that's not what, that, what you're encouraged to believe. But nonetheless, that's, that, that's what we, the language is. We, we believe that, that, that Muhammad is the best creation that has w walked on earth. <coughs> I see Muhammad is the best creation. Yeah, we believe that. But it's not for us then to go and compare him with other prophets mm -hmm. or to, uh, you know, have a ranking system, sure. you know, and then have points sure. and compare the two. Sure. Again, because comparison is very futile in this discussion because these are men who did not act upon their own desires, but they acted upon the instruction, divine instruction, mm -hmm. including Jesus, including Moses. So these people, um, for example, there's a story in the, <coughs> in, 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 the, in the Quran, which I was reading today, it's sort of the Kaf, okay. about uh, Musa, meeting a, 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 a Khidr, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Khidr outspaces him in knowledge. Mm. But I wouldn't say, therefore, Khidr is better. No, no, sure. Right? Sure. Khidr yeah. says, anything that I do, I've been instructed by. Mm. That's the only advantage I had over you, Musa. Sure, sure. But you came to me to learn, right? So, <sighs> what happens sometimes is that we become very tribal. Mm. So, Jesus, right? is a placeholder for what some people would have Manchester in their mind. Oh, I'm a Manchester supporter. No, I'm a Chelsea supporter, sure. right? And I feel like when you deal with the metaphysical, you have to let that ego go and really just indulge in the Quran. What is, it, what is the Quran telling me to do in order to become a better human being and not to support Chelsea or, or Menu? Sure, I, I, I understand that. And you know, it's a noble position, but I would- Jabi! In practice, I would ask, okay. How many times a day do yeah. you say Muhammad's name? Uh, many times, many, many I times. Right. At least five times well, a day. Muhammad al Rasulullah, that's part of yeah, the, yeah, yeah. the, the, the definitely the creed of Islam, right? You yeah. have to say it every day. Yeah. How many times a day do you say <coughs> Jesus' name? It depends what surah you read in the Quran. Ah, okay. If you read Surah Maryam. You, you say it every day? If I read Surah Maryam every day, I would recite. But I would, do you? 
I don't. But I know there are people who do that. Who that, that that's their favorite surah. They would recite Isa ibn Maryam more often mm -hmm. than they would uh, uh, mention. Uh, you think they would mention Jesus' name more? There is a Muslim in the world who mentions Jesus more than. No, Muhammad. no, of course not. Of course right. not. But that's not the point, right? Again, you're quantifying this. You're putting numbers to it. Oh, mm -hmm. How many times do I do this? How many times do I do that? Um, uh, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Oh, how, do I, how do I put this on? Oh, okay, yeah, okay, yeah. All right, okay. Yeah, um, I don't, I don't, I, oh, sorry, sorry, apologies. Yeah, I don't think <coughs> um, the quantity here matters, you know. Uh, there's a, a narration, a hadith, where Allah tells us that uh, the deeds that count the most are those who are persistent and consistent. Sure. Even if they're small. Sure. Right? Makes sense. So quantity isn't the thing that we should like look at. We believe, and you know this, that this message is this is it is the seal. Okay, yeah. it is the seal. It's it's it has come to complement what which came before mm -hmm. and and to enhance which and came before. The gospel is you yeah. Know, in comparison to the Quran, is not as complete and is you know. I am currently ended. I'm I'm currently investigating these claims mm. and relearning a lot about this stuff because I'm not really sure whether that is actually true. I think there has to be like a new approach to the gospels mm. and how we treat the gospels mm. because there are certain traditions where the Prophet Muhammad Sassim, um, sanctions us and allows us to narrate from the Israeliyat mm. and to abstain from uh, saying which is true and which is false because we do not know, mm. right? However, there are certain um, revelations that are, are very uh, in um, in clash with what, what I would believe in. For example, the and I don't know, you tell me if that's actually true because this is something that I've heard. Okay. Is it true that L L Lot, Prophet Lot, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. Slept, Lot, we call him, yeah, Lot, yeah. yeah slept with his with his daughters yes that is true in the old testament so okay. that's not in the gospel but that's in the old testament yeah um he he didn't mean to do it first of all lot isn't i um i'm not sure whether we consider a lot of prophets, prophets okay very, certainly very minor not like abraham sure but he was asked a lot he was tricked into it by his daughters okay this is this is seen as a this is seen as a bad thing yeah um Christianity is really the, the, the Gospels, okay? So let's focus okay. on the Gospels. Okay, um, but you 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 accept the, the, the Old Testament as well, don't you? I, I don't say accept every single word as the Old Testament is literal. I'm a Catholic and you're, you're not you're not bound to do that as a Catholic. For example, the world was created in seven days. We're not we're not bound. Some of it, you know, is allegory. And in fact, this, this isn't just a modernist thing. There's a long tradition of this in Christianity. Wow, interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. So, you know, if you go back to all the way, Augustine, for example. Yeah. I don't know if you've heard of Augustine. Yeah, sure, St. Augustine, a, yeah. He's a, he's, City of God. He's very important, exactly. Yeah. He's a very important saint of ours, you know. He said that what initially put him off converted Christianity was reading the Old Testament. <laughs> and it was only yeah. after he learned to read it through the gospel yeah. that he understood. Yeah. So um, that's one thing. The biggest contradiction for me, yeah. because obviously, you know, we believe that Jesus is God, you don't believe that Jesus is God. Sure. This is this could be seen as more of a hard teaching, right? Yeah. Because there are certain things, I admit, there are certain things in the gospel that can be read like that. Yeah. Okay, which you know, Muslim yeah. apologists love to quote, and it yeah. makes sense, okay? Yeah. Um, and Jesus himself says that the Holy Spirit is, the, is what reveals that to somebody, that, yeah. you know, what we believe, yeah. that Jesus is God. The main difference, and this is one thing I very much hold against, um, or rather, you know, disagree with, is the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. Okay. Um, and so this is absolutely fundamental to yeah. Christianity. Jesus yeah. Christ was hanging there on a cross, yeah. okay? And it's extremely important for us. It's like saying, you know, for you, um, basically, it's like it's like saying we believe in Muhammad, yeah. but he never received a message from Gabriel. Yes. It's, it's like, as, like yeah. wow, what are you what are you talking about? Yeah. Okay, because yeah. that's the foundation of our faith. Yeah, okay? the image of we believe God, but of this perfect man hanging on a cross is essential. Yeah. Okay. Now there are passages in the Quran which, to me, indicate that the person um, thought at one point that uh, you completely yeah. disagree with this, of course. Yeah. But I'm just saying that that Jesus was hung on the cross because he says it says in the Quran, yeah. "We will kill you and we will rise you up again." Yeah. And I know Muslims say that this is referring to the last days, okay? But it's in the past tense. The Arabic is in the past tense, if yeah. I remember correctly. Yeah. Okay. I know that's a completely un-Islamic interpretation. <clears throat> but anyway, this is my position. Okay? Yeah. So please, yeah, respond to that. Sure. Sure. Um, um, the crucifixion again is something that uh, traditionally loads of Muslims uh, didn't or don't agree with mm. because it's it's in, in connotation to the belief of the original sin mm. right that Christ had to die in order for our sins to be forgiven mm. and that is in stark contrast 
with the theology in Islam that teaches us that forgiveness or salvation is possible when the person believes certain things, orthodoxy, mm. but then also sure. does certain things, orthopraxy. Sure. Right? These two things. We believe the same thing. Though. And the grace. Right, right. There's this debate between Catholics and uh, uh, Matthew Luther, right? right. I'm between, Catholic, so right? I believe in works as well. Works yeah. and, and faith alone, right? Right. So it, that's really what um, uh, sort of is a, a juxtaposition with Islam. Sure. That we believe that even if that happened, Jesus still or his staff would not have been uh, a, salv a salvation for, for, for mankind mm. you know it wouldn't have been what salvation is a much more personal thing mm. because your personal relationship with, with God is something that you nurture mm. throughout your life mm. and you nurture it is by uh, falling down and getting up and we have an allegory and a very beautiful example between Adam and Adam's uh, mishap mm. and how Adam's God teaches Adam how to repent sure that's the beauty in this sure, sure. so Adamic and we are very Adamic all of us are children of Adam we are the children of Adam yeah and and therefore our father had to learn and had to and and he became an example for us throughout the ages sure, sure. and that's i think where we there are differences right that's true but saying that quickly saying that yeah please. however and this is uh, not a very popular and not even not many people know about this but there are certain muslim scholars who do believe what you just said okay there are these yeah. there are these uh who square it that way they're very minority though they're very minority you know whenever we say minority majority i, I don't know because like who goes through the data and puts it on the computer and says okay there's 50 scholars who say that and 50 scholars who say that sure. there are popular conversations and they're po conversation that are tend to be more prominent yeah but i wouldn't i don't know if it's more i mean don't get me wrong like, sure you know i've read the, the passages of the quran that talk about the crucifixion of jesus yeah and you are correct yeah. that um, they could be read to indicate that Jesus was crucified. Yeah. You know, um, we did not, they thought that they killed him, but they did not kill him. Yeah. Maybe that means in a permanent fashion. Sure. Perhaps. But, I could understand that, but you know, mainstream Islam doesn't yeah, believe this. The right? traditional position yeah. is that it didn't happen. And the connotation here is because of the original sin right. and what it implicates. But can I just say, so sure. I just want to uh, quickly explain the, the Christian viewpoint there, because you know, you, you've talked about the Islamic viewpoint and yeah. that makes a, a lot of sense. For yeah. us, it's actually quite similar. Yeah. And so you've probably heard this idea that, you know, Christ died for our sins, which is true. I, as a Christian, I believe that. Yeah. Okay. But the, then the question arises, why? Why can't we just repent? Okay. Yeah. And there's a few different answers to this. Yeah. You probably had the Protestant answer. Yeah. Um, something like um, we couldn't pay it off or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay? yeah. But that's not the answer that Aquinas gives, for example. Yeah. The answer that Aquinas gives is because essentially if you, God is like the greatest artist, okay? We look yeah. at this world and it's the most amazing thing you've ever seen. Yeah. Aquinas says there was no more beautiful way yeah. to forgive sin than he himself. Yeah turning the other cheek yeah, than he yeah. himself dying for yeah, others yeah, okay yeah. because we believe jesus was there on the cross yeah. thinking about each one of us here today thinking i'm gonna die for you 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 yeah. you you yeah okay yeah personally yeah that's how much and even if we were the only person that needed salvation yeah. christ would have died for us yeah okay yeah. so god did that yeah to show us what we should be like yeah Okay, it's yeah. part of his great creation, great, sure. great creative plan. Sure. It's actually a beauty. It's not. It's not like he's constrained to do that. Yeah. It's a work of art. Yeah. Okay, that's what we believe. I see the poetry in it. I yes. see the poetry in it and self sacrifice. Thank you. I see the poetry in. And, 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 and coming down to earth and, okay. and, you and, much, and sacrificing yeah. yourself. But then also there are passages in, in the Bible that indicate that God is not hungry for, for, sacri for, for sacrifice, True. right? Yeah. And that God is not, uh, this is the thing. I, I do see where you're coming from, yeah. but to me the Islamic uh, uh, way seems more in accordance with the Bible precisely. You know, the idea that, uh, uh, you know that your forefathers have done something and therefore 
you must, uh, there must be a sacrificial lamb to, to eradicate what your forefathers have done, is precisely taken away your responsibility as a human being who wants to connect to God. There's so many people here, like you were pointing, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, yeah. who want to connect to God, right? Yes, exactly. Right? And they want to have the most deepest conversation with God and the most deepest relationship with God. And I believe the Quran offers that because Allah speaks exactly of it every single time when He speaks of love, when He speaks of warning, He always precedes it with, I'm most forgiving, most merciful, sure, or he subsides it with our most merciful and most forgiving. And that's the nature of God. God, he is, like you said, the master of everything, this sure. beautiful creation, yeah. right? For him, if we sin against him, it's not diminishing his greatness. No, 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 of course not. Right? Course not, yeah. It's not diminishing his yeah. greatness. I used to be a Christian myself. Oh wow, uh, of okay, the so you know what I'm talking about. Yes, yeah. that's why I'm familiar with it. And I, yeah. and I see the poetry in it, I see the sure. beauty in it. I see it, I, I, I do see why it's so appealing to so many people. Sure. But like sometimes I feel like with my Christian brothers, when I was reading, for example, the Gospel of John, I feel like if my Christian brothers could just for a second, because that's what I did, I tried to, to uh, take away my bias, my Muslim bias, because I've been trained as a Muslim now for a very long time. Mm. I converted when I was 16 years old. I'm 30 okay. now. So, okay. So, okay. Right, over a decade. Okay. And I tried to take away my bias as a Muslim. I'm like, okay, what is this, this gospel saying, the gospel of John? Yeah. And I feel like that the Christians are almost there. You're almost there. It's like you, you are following Christ and you love Christ. And I want anyone to understand here that the Christians, they look, that it's all out of love for Christ. Yeah. It's all out of love for sure, Christ. Sure. And I don't think you're trying to like, and love for God, because yeah. we share, yes. which you know an atheist yeah. doesn't have. Right? Yes, this is, yes, this is a yes. Fundamental point, yes. Right? However, be done. however, I believe that there are misreadings and there are mistranslation and the hermeneutics that has transported throughout the ages that um, the message got a bit muddled up, and it was not perhaps not even done uh, intentionally. I don't see this many um, this conversation happening between Muslims and Christians. But what about the Hellenism, the Hellenistic influence in the language, for example, logos, right? Mm -hmm. Logos is a it's, a it's a philosophical concept that comes from the Hellenistic philosophers. You remind me who is this? Uh, Heraclitus. Philo, 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 and Heraclitus yeah, 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 yeah. previously. Sure, sure. Logos, and I agree. And Plato, yeah. yeah, and I agree with the logos. I believe in the logos. I believe Jesus was the logos. Log yeah, meaning the word or. The, the meeting point between the divine and humanity. Yeah. Jesus being here preaching and teaching and this is what happens in the Gospel of John. In the Gospel of John when he comes and he meets the Pharisees and he speaks of a language they don't, don't understand. When he goes to the blind man he says and they ask the Pharisees, ask the blind man who can see now, who is he? He's the prophet. And then he goes to the common folk who don't know anything, yeah. right? Because the Pharisees are uh, gatekeeping, gatekeeping information and knowledge, sure, right? Sure, sure. Uh, and, and the common folk, and, and, and the common folk, and the common, my name is Kangudi, it's an African name, Congo. Okay, uh, and he goes, he goes to the, the common folk and they say, for sure he's the Messiah. I believe in the Messiah and I believe in the, I believe in the man that the, the blind man calls the prophet, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Can I ask you a question? So uh, just going back a bit to the thing you about original sin. Yeah. Yeah. So just to think about original Jesus sin. White or black? Um, hold on, uh, please. Um, <laughs> just to think about original <laughs> sin, okay? Because yeah. um, that's interesting to me. I want to ask questions of this from a Muslim perspective. I might not be able to answer, but yeah, go okay, ahead. Okay. He might have done answer. To the best of your ability, right? Yeah. Um, so with regards to original sin, again, this is a little confused a lot. We have this thing that like, yeah. I'm the person responsible for the sin of Adam. That's not all readings in Christian tradition. Okay. okay? There is this other reading, okay? Yeah. Which I'm gonna, which I now want to ask whether you also believe this is Muslim, because I suspect you do. Yeah. Okay. Is there anyone here who deserves Jannah, heaven? Is there anyone here who would say, I do not deserve to go to hell? If Allah, was, if Allah had complete justice against me. I do not deserve to go to hell. He couldn't justly do that. Is there anyone here who can say that? No. He's sinless. Yeah, 100% agree with you. Okay, that for us, that's original sin. So you talk about like grace. 
Mm. So what you said that is because uh, there's a misconception, there's a misconception as well. Is oh, that yeah, come here. no, 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 it's, it's the right. mic. Yeah, yeah. Okay, which one's that mic? Is it this one? Um, I okay, don't know, but just take yeah, yeah. yeah. So the thing is that as you can see, we're close brothers in Islam. Sure, that's good. <laughs> the thing is here is that <laughs> we don't believe that Jannah is something that you deserve. Mm. Hellfire in Islam is what you what you deserve. Yes. What, what you earned. What you earned. What, what you what what you sorry, my, my, exactly. what you earned. Yeah. Paradise is not what you earned. No. Paradise is what is gifted to you. Exactly. So when it comes to hellfire, God Almighty tells us in the Quran that when the people of the hellfire are when they speak to God Almighty that they say they don't say God you have wronged us they rather say can you give us another chance yeah yeah, yeah. now yeah. that shows you that you know a lot of people come to us atheists and say what kind of a God do you worship you know yeah. if he's the most merciful how can you throw someone in hellfire yeah. Yeah. and I was going through I was doing a class with my teacher and he said something very profound to me and I was like wow I never thought of it like that mm. so what we do is when somebody ends up in hellfire forever we say what kind of a God would do that but rather we do not look and say what a wretched man mm. yeah him why why is yeah, it that God yeah. is unmerciful, yeah. but we don't look at the man and say, what a wretched yeah. man to deserve hellfire? Yeah, exactly. Because when we look at God, we believe he's the most merciful. And, and God Almighty talks about his mercy profoundly in the Quran. So when somebody ends up in the hellfire, you deserve There's it. No yes. Not only deserve it, you earn it. Yes. So, so when it comes to paradise, we have a famous hadith, which says the following. There will come a man on the day of judgment. For the amputees in Saudi Arabia, that is the hellfire. Would you allow us to talk, please? For the amputees in Saudi Arabia, that is the hellfire for them. There's no hellfire. Okay, okay, thank you, thank you. Do you allow us to talk? I'm a human being, fuck away with you. Okay, I don't know if he's a Christian. There we go. Oh, okay. Anyway, so so he's going to read you a verse, but there's a hadith that mentions that on the day of judgment, a man comes to God Almighty Allah and says, and God says to him, enter my paradise by my mercy. Yes. You know that one? Right? You know the hadith? I, I, I don't okay. know that. Okay, check okay. this out. Check this out. When you speak to Muslims, you can mention it. So then the man says, oh Lord, when I enter paradise with my good deeds, he says, okay. So he takes his eyes. He puts it on the balance and he takes all his good deeds uh, and, he, uh, no, and he takes all his blessings and the eye outweighs all the good deeds that he did. Yeah, sure. So now by his justice, God says, by my justice, enter the fire. Yes, exactly. So we believe the same thing. Exactly. So then what happens is the man realizes what happens and he goes, oh Allah, enter me into your paradise by your mercy mm. because he understands by justice you can never pay him back mm. because every heartbeat if you also thank God for every heartbeat you still can't thank him because there's a moment where you sleep and your heart is still beating exactly. yeah, yeah. so we are indebted to God by the get-go exactly. and the only way we'll enter paradise is to not associate partners with him and to worship him alone and on that day by his mercy we seek that's why when Christians come to us and say you guys are not promised paradise neither was your prophet and we're like oh yeah that's because we do it out of our humbleness. We don't boast around and say, oh, go in paradise. No, because we like, I hope I went to paradise. That's why, just to finish off, we have a concept of Islam. No Muslim dies, if they die, we can never say they go in paradise. And no disbeliever dies, unless they're mentioned in the Quran specifically, of specific individuals. Yes, they're specifically mentioned that we can say they are going to the hellfire. Because we say their, their origins of death is what? One died as a disbeliever, one died as a believer. Presser. Would the believer go to paradise? Presser. Maybe. We don't sure. know. Eventually, we believe the, the same thing. Exactly the same thing. Yeah. 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 But I mean, but what, 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 I'm, what I'm just saying is that yeah. in, that for that's original sin, as far as we're concerned. But, okay. but original sin requires um, you believing that Jesus died for your sins, which we differ. Because we say sure, nobody died different. for anybody's sin. Sure, sure, sure. That's where we differ. That's different. But the point is, we all yeah. deserve to go to hell. All of us. But Adam was not created deserving to go to hell. No. Until he sinned, he didn't. Adam did not deserve to go to hell. We, we, we don't say. We won't use the word. We deserve to go to hell. We, we, we can, can I read a, a, a yeah, ayat? Please, please, read yeah. it, it's a beautiful ayat I've read today, and it's amazing that we're having this conversation. Is this in Surah Al Kaf, ayat 58 and 59? Your Lord is most forgiver, full of mercy. Right, proceeding with mercy. Yeah, yeah. He took them to a task for what they earn. He would have hastened on the punishment for them. 
but theirs is an appointment, uh, appointed term for which they will find no escape. And all those of the township, we destroyed them, then they did wrong, and we appointed a fixed time for them. Mm. So this ayat is speaking about, look, if, if God, if it was down to just what they do, sure. God would have like. So we agree. But he's agree. most yes. forgiving and most merciful. Okay. Right? And the only way and the only reason why they get punished is because of that did wrong. Yes. The wrong that they do. Yeah. You know? Um, I just think personally that for anyone who's listening, that if you if if you wanna like have a relationship with God, whether you're Christian or not, I would just say this. Like God is mighty and powerful and God has been speaking to us for thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of years. Exactly. Yeah. And the message should not really uh, deter or change o over the time period. You know, that should be like a, a, a spirit within the message. And I believe the purest message is to worship God alone and to ask for forgiveness, to live your life with fear and hope. Fear preventing you from going overboard and hope to motivate you to continue to be strong enough so that you, you will meet your Lord on the day of judgment. Thank you very much for that witness, sir. I appreciate that. And I really I appreciate just, that. Thank you. I would just like to say I hope God guides both me and you and everyone here to truth and to paradise. Have you read the Quran before? I have. I have a Quran at home. So you I know some stuff. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you, sir. If you do, like, have you ever uh, thought maybe Islam might be the truth? Have you ever gone I have thought about it, but I, and there are certain things that are holding me back, um, which, I've, which I've, I've, I've just described. So, for example, I, I view Jesus as the primary, um, the, the, the best example of humanity is Jesus Christ for me, and his life is who I want to follow, and the fact the historical truth of the crucifixion. Those would be the two primary things that hold me back. Um, do you remember we're say, talking about the false comparison thing, though? That we shouldn't. I do. I, I, I we do. We shouldn't I, compare I Jesus that, with yeah. Moses. Moses with Muhammad. I do. I do. I do. Of course, I do. and it's also relative as well. Because our morality today is like, for example, the way Christians portray Sorry Jesus for to be. You off. Sorry, no yeah. problem. The way they portray Jesus to be is like this pacifist. Um, and, and we know that he, he wasn't just like that. He had his moments where he called the Gentile woman a dog, and when he flipped the tables at the. Um, yeah, it's it's Pacifism. Not really. It's flipping, Pacifism. flipping tables, I wouldn't say it's pacifism at all. I think I don't, I don't think table, Gandhi was flipping I would, I would, tables. I would, I would be careful. Wow. <laughs> is, is Gandhi okay. better than Jesus? He didn't flip no, tables. No, no. And, and, and even if he wasn't, he wasn't. Yeah. It doesn't make him less of a bit of a prophet. Yeah, yeah. Because what the Christians usually come to is the prophet peace be upon him. Oh, your prophet married Aisha at six, or your prophet did that. Yeah. That doesn't negate him being a prophet. Okay, this is this is the this is the, this is the yeah. passage yeah. Jesus yeah. Was yeah. Sure. Okay. Imagine Jesus is there before the well, carry on, so I'm gonna have to put this. Okay, sorry. We have another just a bit more. Yeah. Imagine Jesus is there in the Sanhedrin. Okay, we believe Jesus is God, but you believe he has the power of God behind him. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and, and which is, in the Bible it says that. You know. Okay, exactly. Yeah. So he's standing there in the Sanhedrin. A man punches him and says, "How dare you speak to the high priest like that?" Punches Jesus. Yes. Yeah. That's what. That's what's said. I've never heard that word. Yeah, yeah. It's in the Bible. Yes. That's okay. In the okay. Let me the man punches him. Yeah. Okay. Jesus essentially turns the other cheek. Yeah. He says, "Why have you struck me? Yeah. What did I say that's wrong? And if I said something that's wrong, tell me." Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We God, yeah. who is supporting that man in existence right now yeah. by his power, yeah. Yeah. is yeah. Yeah. hit by yeah. this man. It's crazy, yeah. Yeah, and he just allows it to be. Yeah. He just says, "Tell me what I've done wrong." Yeah. Okay, that is pacifism by okay. any standard. But then, if, if if that if that happens, that's do you remember the example I gave you about the prophet lying down and the man coming with the sword and he loses the sword? So right. But this is a very similar example of that. That is, that is, that is, that is pacifism. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I would argue it's not quite, maybe as much, but Let still me give you something better. Yeah. Let me give you something better. There was a man, a Bedouin. He comes to the prophet, he says, you owe me money. He grabs him. And, and it says, until his neck became red. Sure. Or swollen. Sure. And then the companions, similar like the companions who cut off the ear. Yeah. Of the man. Yeah. They love Muhammad. They come and want to get rid of the guy and kill him. Sure. And the prophet says, leave him alone and give him the money. Yeah, that's good. And that's a good example. I don't deny that. The point I'm trying to make is that life is very dynamic. Uh, uh, sorry, I've already got one. Yeah. <laughs> that's for another camera. Oh, OK, all right. Life is very, <laughs> life, life, life is very dynamic. Life is very dynamic, right? Yeah. And we judge human beings upon the circumstances they are in. Sure. Jesus, uh, 
he was a carpenter, but the intelligence and the wisdom he had was far superior. Sure, sure. Right? But I don't understand this. I don't understand yeah. something. Yeah. Why, after God's already given the example of Jesus, of yeah. somebody who gets punched and doesn't even yeah. respond, yeah. would he then give the example of somebody who's in much more of a kingly position? The, pro the prophet was not a king. No, no, no but he was in a, a, a position of power. No, no, he, was, he, was a, he, was a, he was a leader. Yeah. But the thing is, when we're talking about Jesus, we can say the same. When we look at Jesus in the Old Testament, they get pacifist. The Jesus that you're talking about in mm. the Bible, yeah, is an outright genocidal killer. Because if you look at what happened, he's the God of the Old Testament. What happened in the first time of chapter 15, verse 2 to 3, where he says, go to the Malachites and kill men, women, children, babies, donkeys. So when we look at the Jesus, because we need to be consistent, because we see a shift in his personality in the New Testament. And we say, for example, that doesn't really add up. But Jesus says that himself. No, no. But, what, he, says that, he says that there's a shift. You know, what, you've he heard say? it said. What? You've heard it said, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. Yes. But I tell you, do not repay the evildoer. Yes. Okay. Love your enemies. So that, so that if that's the case, then why you can't God your enemy, choose kill your enemy. when God, when, so, why doesn't God choose? Your enemy. Because in the Old Testament, <laughs> it's an eye for an eye. Hey, that tooth for a tooth. Yeah. Yeah. Practice okay. love your enemy. Okay, okay thank you. Kill so, your so, enemy. So, so, so the thing is, in the Old Testament, that the God of Jesus is somebody who's killing men, women, children, babies. In the New Testament, Testament is more to pacifist. Go. Yes. If God can go from that to that, that do you find it an issue when Allah God Almighty decides to send send the sure. prophet in a way suited to his people? Is that far fetched when we look at it? To me, far fetched seems be, consistent to me. Makes, makes sense, but there's yeah. a problem there, yeah. okay? That we believe from the Old Testament yeah. because people weren't ready for the revelation of the Old Testament. I yeah. mean, the ancient Israelite society, they were yeah. doing unbelievable things. They were yeah. throwing yeah. their yeah. children exactly. into the fire, exactly. yeah. right? Okay, well, maybe we're getting a bit like that nowadays yeah. in certain sectors. Well, well, but, you know. well, yeah, yeah. but okay, but that's what they were doing to, yeah. to demons, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay, and burning them as a sacrifice. Yeah. So people weren't ready for that. God goes from the inferior. No, leave, 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 leave. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so yeah, you say so. Yeah. So God goes from the inferior to the superior. I thought that was the. Yeah. <laughs> he goes from the inferior to the superior. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Now, what's contained in the Quran? I'm not saying that it's contrary to the God of the Old Testament, but it's not as superior as what's in the New Testament from a Christian perspective. What's your definition so why are we going inferior, superior, and back to inferior again? But what's your definition of superior? Superior is yeah. pacifism, love your enemies. Who, who, said, who um, said that? Who said that's superior? Jesus. No, no, one said, no, no, but that's your measure. So what you're saying is, you're saying it's more circular. You're saying this is our measure, mm. which you claim, which is Jesus. Firstly, because when you're talking about the Bible, firstly, we need to establish a few things that these things that have been talked about Jesus, how do you know that's written about him? Because we need to authenticate the Bible within itself. Mm -hmm. Even if we were to go down that route, who says that being a pacifist means that that is the that is all the, the time, all That's the time benchmark. as well. Because what you're saying is, and I know very well, if there was a Christian here, and if I punched him in the face, mm. I have no shadow of a doubt he's coming with a hook. Sure, but I Jesus, no. No, 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 no. Let me tell you. Because we know he did it. No, okay, no, no. Nowadays, now he's glorified in heaven. No, no, no. We know, that no he... we know, we know. Not punch, not punch. Forget not punching someone back. We know he ordered the killing of babies, children, men, and donkeys. Old Testament, the inferior. Okay. Did he? Okay, one second. So you're telling me, how could God be inferior? No, it's not a question of God being inferior. It's a question of the people at that time couldn't handle the true message of what Christianity, what God really wants from us. Can I say something? What's your yeah. name? Sorry, sorry. Uh, Harry. Harry. Ali, yeah, sorry. Okay, yeah, 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 fair enough, fair enough. In fact, I would go so far as to say something yeah. else. I can show you that in Islam, yeah. God is a pacifist, like what Jesus is saying. Because Jesus shows us, okay, all monotheists, we all yeah. believe, yeah. right, okay, that God is supporting us right now. He's making the sun yeah, yeah, shine, yeah. Yeah. the yeah. rain fall the, the on us, our heart's beating. Yeah. Exactly. And we also believe that the one who sins persistently yeah. is an enemy of God. Yes? No. Okay. He's a rebel that, towards God. We don't believe that as Muslims, but... Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, we don't believe that, yeah. What Jesus says that every time... Yeah. God makes the sun shine on all of us now equally. Yes. He's turning the other cheek yes. to those who sin against him. Uh, because he could destroy them right then and yeah, there. That, he has every right to. We call that we call that mercy, not being pacifist. Right. So we need to differentiate between pacifism and being merciful. Okay. So someone punches you, okay? Every time you commit a sin, you're punching God in the face. No. Right? Because you're disobeying. you're disobeying. Of course it doesn't hurt him. Yes, yes. Right? Yeah. But nonetheless, that's the intention. Okay? okay. So if you punch me, okay? Right? I ain't, I'm, I ain't perfect. Okay? Yeah, course, <laughs> I'd probably exactly. try and respond. Yes. But the perfect Christian wouldn't. The saint yes. 
wouldn't. Yeah. Because I'm responding, but God doesn't. No, I, I, who am I to say? Who am I to you punish you more than God? I, I, I understand. But what I'm trying to say is, for example, we're confusing God's mercy mm. to his uh, being a pacifist. Okay. Yeah. So what we're seeing is that, firstly, being a being uh, somebody who is somebody that will retaliate doesn't make one inferior because at the end of the day that for, for example if I know that you hitting me is going to cause you to carry on hitting not only me and then my mom and then my dad and then my family then I'm gonna have to hit you harder so you know that you can't do that, well, that case, so we, then I can't say yeah. I'm inferior I would say no I'm actually superior because I have to, uh, well, that case in that context well exactly so now you have a, a um, a definition where you're saying, okay, in certain circumstances, we would have to do that as well. And that's what the Christian, uh, like, you know, crusaders, and, you know, they sure. went, they, they did certain things, you know, sure. which were outright wrong. Mm. But this whole notion of that pacifism is the benchmark is wrong. Because then Not we, absolute pacifism. Because then we will say, Moses, when God, God entrusted him with the commandments. Sure. So if, he, if God is entrusting someone with commandments, then he has to be in a level of some kind of superiority. So then we can't come and say, well, now he's inferior because he's not passive. No, we'll say God Almighty entrusted him with something and he had the best character for that specific time. Because different people have different temperaments in different times. Now people are like snowflakes. If I say something, yeah. the guy will, I'm not a man, I'm a woman, or no, I'm a piano, or I'm a tree. Yeah, so, 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 well, exactly. so, 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 the thing is here, yeah. we're living at times where you can't even, you have to be very careful what you say to someone. Mm. So it changes from time to time. So what I'm just saying is we can't have the benchmark of, this is what it is, and anyone below that is inferior because you said that's one of the things that's stopping you from looking in or accepting Islam. Yeah, that's may, the reason may I saying. introduce something similar as well, Go which on. I think makes it more comprehensive. The Quran does speak of like, um, and I wouldn't even the terms both you use, I wouldn't even use inferior and in, 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 uh, inferior and superior. I wouldn't use these terms because it's all circumstantial, which means sometimes what you do could be inferior, mm. but then sometimes something you do is inferior, although it's recommended to do so. Mm. So it's circumstantial. Why? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala many many times in the Quran talks about and if they and if they attack you, you have the right to retaliate. Yeah. However, if you abstain from it, and that's best for you. Yeah. That's this maxim as well in the Quran, yeah. right? It's also a maxim. Sure. So there in this sure. so, so it's saying it's best. No, it's no, but in that instance, well, of course, like in even that when instance, it comes to Qasas, for yeah. example, in this instance. But, uh, when it comes to killing, like if someone murders my brother, we have three options. Number one, um, forgiveness. Mm. Uh, number two, um, money, blood money. Blood money. Number three, an eye for an eye. Mm. And Allah says, indeed, it's better for you to forgive. Yeah. Right. So, so the thing is, God Almighty, this is, we don't say he's pacifist. What that means is he gives you the first the choice to yourself. That's a right. You're, you're, that's a right. But can I yeah. ask you a question? Yeah. Would you not say that the prophet yeah. that incarnates the principle of forgiveness is therefore more likely to be the seal of the and prophets than the one that in, it incarnates no, no. The, prophet, the eye for an eye? No, no. The prophet Muhammad SAW is comprehensive. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is comprehensive. Mm -hmm. He has situations that he has to go through where yes. he forgives. Yes. In he fact, has. there are situations where he forgives and God disagrees with him. Yeah. There are situations like yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. So the prophet had uh, hostages. Him and Abu Bakr, yeah. Radwan, yeah, yeah. decided to forgive and have ransom instead. Yeah. And revelation comes down and says no. Umar ibn Khattab said yeah. the contrary. Yeah. He said no, yeah. he should be executed. Yeah. And there are instances where the Prophet forgives. Yeah. You know, many, many instances. Because uh, what has happened over time is that there have been pundits and scholars yeah. who have hijacked the Prophet Muhammad yeah. and has portrayed him as a warlord. Yeah. We have this very famous example recently, Muhammad Hijab speaking to Jordan well, Peterson. Warlord's a pejorative term. Warlord is like a negative term. You call someone sure. a warlord negatively. Sure. Yeah. But he was a political leader. No, no, oh, no, no, no but, yeah, but right. he's a military leader, no, no. a general. But the, the yeah. point I'm trying to make is that that was an anchor in our mind frame, mm. in the Western mind frame, for a very, very long time. You have um, a Christian, you know, uh, Matt, Martin Luther, mm -hmm. he speaks in a very pejorative term about sure, the prophet. Yeah, they all do, they so it's, yeah. it's been very deeply ingrained in human beings, in the West in particular, to view the prophet Muhammad in that light. Yeah. So we have this very famous example recently where Muhammad Hijab had a conversation with Jordan Peterson. I'm sure you're familiar with Jordan Peterson. I am, yeah, right? of course. <laughs> and in that conversation, Muhammad Hijab successfully argued that the, the term warlord is not only misplaced, it's, it's unjust. Sure. Okay. And and the, that's the point I'm trying to make here overall is that the Prophet Muhammad was a comprehensive human being who had to deal, deal with different scenarios at different times. 
and I have no right to say, therefore, he is better than Jesus or yeah. Moses. But I can say that is the best example that a human being could have behaved. Yes. That's that's the, the, that's the, the best he could have done, yeah. yeah. I, again, I, 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 you know, as I said, um, I mean, you, you said that it's better to forgive. So in that specific instance of uh, uh, murder. Mm. That Allah tells you there to do are that. But there is, there is certain things that is not yeah. forgiven. Like, that's why we say this whole thing of God is God has a son, God is um, part of the Trinity. Well, but, wait, wait, wait. First, of, first of all, this is a misconception. So the same way you said that Son the, of God, the, God of the Son, exactly. different. Well, exactly. The Son yeah. of God doesn't mean that God literally had yeah. a kid, yeah. right? It doesn't mean that in Christianity. Okay, there is the word okay. begotten used, which there is, is the word begotten, but even yes. that doesn't mean the same thing. Okay, no problem. It's even like, not... for example, can I just say, hold yeah. on, because yeah. this is important, right, for yeah. the future, yeah. that when it says son of, yeah. that that was a Jewish idiom at the time yeah, yeah. to yeah. mean that's yeah. your quality. So yeah. Jesus called Judas the son of perdition, yeah. which means he's going to hell. Yeah. So right? you, don't, you don't believe Jesus was the, not li we don't, God not the literal, son. You believe God but, the son, but, but, but do you believe he was God the son? Yes, but yeah. not. It doesn't mean anything like what we would say. Son, it's just a word to make us understand something. No, okay. but there's a difference between God the Son, which is a theological for example, point, for example, and I Son would, of God. For example, I, in the same way that my word is my son, it's like that. Yeah. And it says in Christianity, Saint Augustine says that the same way that a human being has their identity, has their intellect, and has their emotions, that's the Trinity. That's the closest thing we can understand it. Okay. But you're, so, you're, you're, they're the co-equal co though. You can't really say that because they're co-equal. Well, my, my word is co-equal with my identity and my emotions. They're, they're all part they're, of me. They're, they're, a part of your, they're a part of your attribute, but you're not you're not necessarily saying that because you're talking about, for example, when Jesus says in the... I can't exist in, without my word. In the, in the Bible. No, of no, course, of course. That's that's what that's it me, makes you. Am, but yeah. you don't... The, the Trinity that you believe in is not in that concept because you believe because the God, like in John 1, 1, yeah? It says, in the beginning was the word and the yeah. word was yeah. uh, with God. Mm. Yeah, and the word was God. Mm. So now if you believe Jesus to be a part of the triunion God, then he is God. So then we have two gods simultaneously in one specific position no, because- it's God. It's like if I say that my word is with me, my word is with me, yeah. it's always with okay, me. Okay, no problem. No, 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 okay. But the thing is here, Jesus was sent yeah. to earth. Sure. The father, where was the father? Heaven. The Father is everywhere. I mean, the Father is in heaven most, uh, yeah, most um, do, do you revealed, believe? of course. Yes, okay. Uh, so the Father, look, for example, the Father is the one, is the Father the one that sent Jesus? If the Father is yes. in heaven. Yes, yes. Okay, if the Father is the one that sent Jesus, you need to understand. I, I send my word. No, 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 but you need to understand the way you're, the way you're saying it, it's not the same way you believe it. Because when you say that Father sent Jesus, yeah, there's something being sent. Your word is not something manifested. Yeah, it's not manifested. Yo, allow me, bro. Yeah, no, no. Yeah, it's, 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 mani it's, it's manifested, yeah? Okay, it's manifested. Yeah. So Jesus came to earth. Mm, yeah. So it's not the same as your word, what you utter. It's your attribute, yeah? It came to earth. So what we're seeing is that you, in the Quran, Allah makes this very severe to us. That's why we believe, that's why I'm a revert to Islam like nine years ago, 10 years ago, yeah? Ah, well, the, you were a Christian before. No, no, I wasn't. I was an um, a theist. I believed in God. I had no religion. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, so I looked into the Bible. I was reading the Bible at one point in my life. I was looking, I was reading the Quran. So the thing is, we, hold, we all believe that we have a fitrah, which is our innate, innate disposition. Yeah. For anybody to come to me and say, God came to earth was like, thank you. I can't go down that route. You know why? Because firstly, it's beyond my comprehension. But then again, you can say, oh, just because it's beyond a comprehension doesn't mean it cannot happen. Yeah. But the thing is, to utter a statement about God, which he didn't say for himself, is a big sin. So what we say with the, like Allah says in the Quran is, tell the people of the book, the Christians, let us come to common terms between us and you, that we worship God and God alone. That's all it is. We have a lot of commonalities. What God is saying is, look, let's not transgress. What did, you, what did Jews do to Jesus? They degraded him. They said his mother's an adulteress. They outright rejected him. What did the Christians do? They glorified him to a level of being God. Islam says, look, let's be balanced. We do not reject him and call his mother adulterer, Audhu Billah. Yeah, it's a, it, no, neither do we glorify him to a level where he's God. We see him as a mighty prophet that was sent. One of the most amazing prophets. He was born in a miraculous birth and he's the Messiah and he's going to come back. We glorify him and honor him. But we do not, not over-honor him. But 